Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we're going to check out another really cool recur figure as we take a look at one of my most anticipated models from my most recent acquisition of a giant box of recur models. This is their Dilophosaurus. It is a newer release from them. I don't entirely know exactly what year it was released, and I don't know if this little slip will actually tell me. So first of all, you've got a little plastic stand here that the Dilophosaurus comes in, but we don't need that. And Yes, the Dilophosaurus stands perfectly without it. But if we take a look here at the little booklet that goes with this, I don't know entirely if this will actually tell me when this was made, but it does state that it is in 1 19th scale right there, which is cool to have an actual scale associated with the model. And then if we continue through, we actually have some information on the Dilophosaurus right here. I actually am a little sad that I failed to realize this in the Ophthalmosaurus review because I was unaware of the fact that these booklets contained information on the species. I should have pointed that out in that review, but I don't actually see a date associated with this, but I definitely know it hasn't been out for all that long. It's a fairly new figure, either this year or last year. I can't really recall, but it looks really cool. Again, a really nice looking sculpt, kind of a stylized version of a Dilophosaurus as Recur always has their own kind of style as far as their models go. And I'm definitely a fan of the continued stylized looks of their figures. And this one specifically looks incredibly cool, almost like a movie monster style Dilophosaurus. So let's go ahead and get a closer look at it right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt of our Dilophosaurus, you can see that the actual texturing to the skin and everything looks quite nice. It's actually really quite fine scaling, but once you turn it and kind of let the light hit it, you can definitely pick up on the actual texturing of the skin quite nicely. You can see the nostrils sculpted out up here on the tip of the snout. You can also see some shading there in the palette area of the Dilophosaurus. Some nice dark browns are displayed there, kind of playing off of the somewhat lighter brown that we have as the primary body color of our Dilophosaurus. You can also see some nice red up there in the crest, and I don't know how well it's picking up on camera, but here in person I can actually see that there are like some lighter and darker shades of red within the crest, like it's not just one solid shade of red. There are definitely some kind of splotches of darker reds included in there, which helps to give it a very realistic appearance. You also have a nicely painted eye with a yellow and then kind of a black around it and a nice black pupil, almost a slit-like pupil right there. You have that hook in the jaw, which is something that we always see associated with Dilophosaurus, as that's exactly how the animal looked, but you can also see the tongue on the inside of the mouth painted with a very nice realistic tone of like a pinkish color. Also beautifully glossed. You can see each of the teeth are sculpted individually inside the mouth as well. And they're all nicely painted with an off-white, kind of bordering on a yellow. So it has a lot more of a realistic look to it as opposed to kind of like a brighter white or anything like that. Definitely very nice colors chosen for the teeth. The upper side of the crest also looks really quite nice. As we lead down into the neck region of our Dilophosaurus, you can see lots of really nice creasing and everything picking up. You can also see the spinal column of the Dilophosaurus is nicely highlighted in the sculpt, and you can also see some nice stripes that start to show up here in the neck region with a black, but you also have like a nice creamy color here on the underside of the neck that stripes back up the opposite way and they just kind of meet right there. Pretty cool looking as far as that goes. You can see the throat in general is nicely sculpted out here. As you move down the course of the neck, there's lots of skin wrinkles and stuff going on there in the neck region of the Dilophosaurus. Heading back up into the body, you can see the shoulder blade there displayed in the sculpt, as well as again some more really nice skin texture and some decent muscle tone here in the arm. You can also see the elbow present right there. As you lead down into the hands, the hands are pretty nicely sculpted, giving a nice coloration there for the nails, kind of a darker brown. You can see that the wrists are pronated, which is something that Dilophosaurus most certainly could not actually do. But again, I don't really look at the recur figures as far as like an accuracy standpoint goes because they're just kind of like their own thing, and I really like the fact that they all have their own recur style. You can see, again, more really nice texturing to the skin throughout the entire side of the dinosaur all the way up here into the back. You can also see some nice dark shading here to the spinal column of the Dilophosaurus. As we move down here into the thigh, you can see some nice muscle definition in the thigh, as well as, again, some nice highlighting with a darker coloration in the thigh region. As we continue to move down the course of the body, you see a little more muscle definition in the calf, some nicely sculpted out feet with some black nails, 
that are painted quite nicely. You have some scoots down the course of the toes. You do have a dew claw present. Both feet actually, of course, would have the dew claw, and it's nicely painted there as well. As you move up into the tail, you can see the skin stretching off of the tail right there as the leg here is pulling forward, stretching that skin quite nicely. And we have more of that kind of creamy color that stripes up throughout the body the entire way through. I really like that. And then we move out the length of the tail. You can see lots of really nice creasing and everything in the tail. A little curve to the tail, nothing super flashy right there. If we take a look at the opposing side, the Dilophosaurus does have its head turned to the right. So it's looking away from us now at this point, but you can see that the head sculpt looks really good just like it did on the previous side. And then again, as we move down the course of the body, you can see the spinal column sticking up and again the black stripes and then the white stripes that kind of meet there. Nice creasing right here at the bottom of the neck where the dinosaur is lifting its head up quite high to take a look around. You can see how it's creasing the skin right there. So some pretty nice attention to detail on the part of Recur. And then again, as we lead down here into the body, you can see the shoulder blade protruding from the skin a little bit right there. But we have some more really nice skin detail here. As you can see, this arm is pushing into the body. This leg is pushing into the stomach and it's bunching the skin up quite nicely right there, which is definitely very nicely displayed in the sculpt. And as we continue to move along the body, again, the spinal column is nicely elaborated with that black coloration up there and we have that same style of highlighting the muscle definition over here in the thigh just like we had seen on the previous side very similar looking leg and foot sculpt over here to what we had just seen on the previous side because the dinosaur isn't in any type of like a crazy dramatic position on this side any more so than it is on the other side so it's a very similar stance with the right leg just a little bit further than the left leg as the dinosaur is just kind of standing there probably looking around debating on its next move but you can also see again that the tail sculpt looks really quite nice as we lead out the length of the tail. We also have some pretty nice looking detailing here to the underside of the figure. And actually, look at that. There we go. I should have just looked on the underside. The underside states that this was made in 2020. So this is a figure from last year. But again, you also have some nice muscle tone displayed in the chest right there. But even though it's not the most accurate interpretation of a Dilophosaurus, and the Dilophosaurus's image actually just changed yet again, but I still think it's a really cool and very appealing stylized version of a Dilophosaurus from Recur. Another really cool aspect of the Recur models, which some people like, some people don't, I personally actually really quite like it, is the fact that it is a soft kind of a squishy feel, and they are incredibly flexible. Like, you can move that head and neck around all over the place. Same deal with the tail, the legs, the hands, arms, everything is quite flexible, so... It's a good option as far as buying a dinosaur for your kid if that's the route you're going to go because again it's something that they're probably not going to be able to hurt each other with and they can also get a really cool sizable dinosaur figure and that's one thing I've always said about the recurve figures it's a great choice for children because of the fact that they're that soft squishy feel because it's again something that's much safer than some of the other companies that produce dinosaur figures but also, still a really cool figure, I think, from a collectible adult standpoint that I personally, being an adult collector, I really love the Recur figures and the Recur style, so I still think it's a great choice as far as adult collectors go also. But as far as the size goes for a length on our Dilophosaurus, it is a foot long or about 30 and a half centimeters, I would say, so definitely very sizable, and that is one thing that's really cool about the Recur models as well as that they are usually really quite large and then you also have a height of about six and a half inches or 16 and a half centimeters so really quite sizable and to show you that for a comparison there is mr papo t-rex the attack pack colovasaurus and robert muldoon from the mattel jurassic world toy line next to our dilophosaurus and you can quite clearly see that this recurred dilophosaurus is a very impressive size staring down the papo rex there face to face looking like he's about to take a bite out of the Paparex's snout, but also showing you that the attack pack Colovasaurus and Robert Muldoon are also quite small in comparison to this really sizable Dilophosaurus. So if the sculpt and detail and cool paintwork wasn't enough to impress you, hopefully the size will do the job. So this Recur Dilophosaurus is definitely a really nice figure that I'm quite happy to now enter into my collection. I was definitely excited to hear that Recur had created a Dilophosaurus because I do believe this is the first time or at least to my knowledge that they've ever released a Dilophosaurus so I was definitely psyched that they had done just that because I'm a huge fan of Dilophosaurus I always have been ever since I was a child even prior to Jurassic Park I was still a big fan of Dilophosaurus because I used to have these really cool books I don't really recall exactly 
who they were made by, but when I was a kid, one of the books was based all around Dilophosaurus, so I always was a big fan of that dinosaur. And uh, I've always had kind of a soft spot for that species, so anytime anyone makes a Dilophosaurus, I usually want to get it and add it to my collection. And I'm really happy to have the Recur version now in my collection. It sports a really nice, very cool looking sculpt. Again, not your most up-to-date or most scientifically accurate interpretation of a Dilophosaurus, but still a really cool looking Dilophosaurus. Kind of that very cool Recur stylized look that they have for all of their figures, which... I am definitely a fan of. It's kind of like Takara Tomy, how they have like their own stylized look. I always felt like Recur had their own stylized look as well. And it's something that, you know, if you're not familiar with the company, you may jump on it right away and love it. And it also may be something that you kind of have to become accustomed to before you really can start to respect it as much as I do. But I personally like that look of their figures. And I think, again, from a detailing standpoint, the figure is quite beautifully done. It sports some really nice texturing to the skin throughout, as well as some beautiful paintwork that's really nice and naturally applied. Very nice shading done throughout the entire model, as well as some really nice tones of red up there in the crest making sure that it has a really flashy look but with some really nice naturalistic tones of color i love the paint scheme for it in general i think they did a great job of choosing the paint scheme and all of the colors play off of each other really nicely throughout the entire model Recur does a great job on the actual paint jobs of their figures and that's definitely present here on this one as again the paintwork looks really good on the figure i think the only thing that could have potentially made the figure a little better would have been a dark wash but that is present on the giganotosaurus that we will be reviewing very soon i'm just always a big sucker for dark washes and this has some really nice detailing that i feel like a dark wash could have really climbed into their cracks and crevices of the sculpt to highlight the sculpt but honestly it looks great. I'm definitely psyched to have this Dilophosaurus. And if you are interested in it, I will include a link in the description to where you can purchase this on the Recur store. So make sure you check the link in the description. Go buy this really nice looking Dilophosaurus and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.